Okay, so we will start with uh, algebra review. Okay, so the way I'm going to review algebra is by, by going over uh, a couple of different uh, problems. So the first one uh, is uh, the following. The question is evaluate evaluate each expression uh, without a calculator. Um, okay, so f the first one is uh, 81 to the exponent negative 3 fourth. Okay, how would you evaluate this expression? Why is this color coming so bad? Uh, was the color coming this way from the beginning? Yes. Hmm. Let me try not one of the uh, You guys can see this? Yes. Okay. Um, I'm not sure why this is, usually it's, uh, it's uh, much nicer than this, but um, I'll figure out what, what's going on here uh, later. All right, so uh, how, do I, how do I evaluate this, anybody? Yeah, but, uh, okay, so what I'm going to do is the following, okay? First of all, uh, I am going to write 81 uh, as uh, 3 to the 4, is that correct? Uh, 81, like 3 times 3 is 9, 9 times 3 is 27, 27 times, 27 times 3 is 81. So 3 to the power 4, 3 to the power 4, that's 81, right? So now, uh, how do I evaluate this expression? Well, if you have 3 to the power 4 and then the whole thing to the power negative 3 fourth, and what do you do in that case? You multiply the exponents, right? So what do you get? 3 to the power 4 times negative 3 fourth, right? you multiply the exponents and if you do that what do you get 3 to the power negative 3 which is the same as as you said it's 1 over what 1 over 3 cube right and so that's equal to 1 over 27 uh, everybody is okay with that all right um, Problem B, let's do another exercise like this. Uh, how about 4 fifth to the negative 2? 4 fifth to the exponent negative 2. What should I do with this one? 
Yeah. First thing to do is flip it and get rid of the negative mm -hmm. exponent. Yeah, so make the negative exponent, uh, turn, turn the exponent into a positive one. So I am going to rewrite this as 5 fourth to the power positive 2, okay? And then what is that equal to? That's equal to 5 squared divided by 4 squared, right? And what is that? 25 over 16. Everybody is okay with this example? All right, if you have questions, raise your hand, okay? Don't be shy. C, uh, 3 to the 21, 3 to the 21 divided by 3 to the 15. Okay, what is that equal to? What is that equal to? Yeah, so you have the same base 3, right? The base in both expression, in the, in the numerator and in the denominator, the base is 3, the exponents are 21 and 15, right? So in that case, you can combine the exponents in which way? Because you're dividing, you subtract the exponents, right? So this would be equal to uh, 3 to the 21, minus 15 which is equal to 3 to the 6 okay and you can you can uh, multiply that out I guess uh, 3 to the 4 was 81 81 times 3 81 times 9 right 81 times 9 so what is that 729. Okay, so that's uh, C. What is uh, another, let's do another one like this. Uh, 5 to the 3 divided by 7, uh, no, sorry, uh, divided by 5 to the 7. What do I get in this case? What was that? Yeah, so in this case, uh, I, can, I can write it as 5 to the 7 minus 3 in the denominator, right? Okay, and what do I get? 1 over 5 to the 4. What is 5 to the 4? 625. Okay. Is everybody okay with that? All right, the next question number two, uh, let's say simplify, simplify each expression. Okay, and uh, A, let's say I have 3 times x to the 3 half uh, y cubed uh, divided by uh, x squared um, y to the negative half and the whole fraction to the power negative 2. Okay, so that's what we have. Okay, so how do I how do I uh, simplify this? How do I simplify this? What should I do? Yeah. You mean the exponents? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It, to make the negative exponent a positive one, okay? So what he is suggesting, th there are a number of ways you can go about this problem because you, the steps that you take, you don't have to take in, in specific order, okay? So what he is suggesting, let's just uh, flip the fraction and make the negative 2 a positive 2, okay? 
So this would be uh, x squared. Um, you know what? Uh, I am not going to take his suggestion at the beginning, uh, but I'm going to take your other other suggestion, which is uh, combine uh, combine the exp uh, the exponents. So what I'm going to do is write it as three times x to the three half minus that two in the denominator, and then I have y to the three minus a minus half, right? Okay, because you're dividing, you're subtracting the exponent uh, from the denominator. And then the whole thing is, uh, is to the power negative 2. Everybody's okay so far? Now, let's simplify the uh, exponents here. So I have 3, uh, what is 3 half minus 2? Negative half. Oops, x to the that. And then y to the uh, 3 plus a half, right? So what is that? 7 half, right? And then I have to take to the exponent negative 2. Now what is that? This is equal to uh, 3 to the power uh, negative 2 uh, x to the negative half to the power negative 2 y to the 7 half to the power negative 2, right? I could do that. So uh, you have to take, you have to raise each one, each factor to negative 2. And what is 3 to the negative 2? Well, that's the same as 1 over 3 squared. Here I get x to the what? Well, you multiply negative half, you multiply negative half and negative 2, right? What do you get? Mm -hmm. 1. And what is uh, y to the 7 half times to the power negative 2? Negative 7. Okay. And now I can write it as uh, 1 over 9 x uh, y to the negative 7. That's the same as 1 over y to the 7. Okay. And finally, I'm going to write it as x over 9 y to the 7. Uh, everybody is okay with that? All right. Um, let's uh, look at another example. Uh, you guys are done writing it down? Okay. Let's look at another example. Uh, B. Let's say I have the expression y divided by x minus x divided by y. And this is divided by 1 over y minus 1 over x. So that's the expression that I have. I need to simplify this out. Okay, so what should I do in this case? Yeah, there are actually a couple of different things to do, he, different ways you could go about this. Uh, but I think the easiest thing to do here is, that, is the following. Notice what, what's the common denominator. So you look at all the fractions in the numerator. There are two fractions in the numerator, right? There are two fractions in the denominator. Uh, what's the common denominator? X multiplied by Y, right? That's the common denominator. So what I'm going to do is uh, multiply this fraction with x times y over x times y. So notice that I am actually multiplying by 1, right? But I am writing 1 as x, so xy divided by xy. Why? Now notice that, uh, notice that the xy here will be multiplied with this fraction, right? And the, and the uh, xy in the denominator here will be multiplied with the fraction in the denominator, right? So if I do that, what do I get? If I multiply the numerators, what do I get? Well, when you multiply, if I multiply y over x, 
with x y, what do I get? You get y squared, right? You get y times y, right? If you multiply, yeah. everybody sees that? So that is, uh, let me do it here. So I have y over x, I am going to multiply that by x y, right? So x cancels out, you are left with y squared, right? So I get y squared minus, when I multiply with x over y, I get what? x squared. In the denominator though, I get what? In the denominator, when I multiply 1 over y with x, y, what do I get? x and x minus y. So this is what I get, right? Everybody is okay with that? All right. Now, can we, uh, can we reduce this further? Can I simplify more? Go ahead, how? Okay, so I think what you, are try, are, what you are trying to say though is you can factor out the numerator as y minus x times x minus y, right? Oops, uh, y. Um, this is what I want to say. So I am factoring out the numerator, right? You can factor out the numerator in this way, right? y squared minus x squared is the same as y minus x times y plus x. Now, uh, can I cancel out x minus y and y minus x? Can I cancel out these two? I can, but what do I have to write? Negative 1, right? Is that okay? The, x minus y and y minus x, they are negative of each other, right? So this is equal to what? Negative y plus x. And I'll just keep my answer, answer right here. So that would be the final answer. Some people might prefer to write negative y, negative x, okay? but that's okay. Any questions on this? Everybody is okay with that? All right. Uh, another. Another problem. Again, it simplify it simplify uh, the expression. So, suppose I have actually five half minus. 3x to the half plus 2x to the negative half. Okay, so what should I do here? I guess when you have an expression like this, you usually don't want negative exponents and if you can make the exponents integers that's another simplification that you can do so what trick can I apply here to accomplish that uh, again there are a couple of different ways of going about this problem okay uh, one thing you could do here is first of all I am going to rewrite this as x to the 5 half uh, minus 3 x to the half uh, plus uh, 2 divided by x to the half. Is that correct to write? Okay. Now what's the denominator here? For the first term, what's the denominator? one. The second term, the denominator is one as well. In the third term, the denominator is actually half. So what's the common denominator? The common denominator is actually half, right? You guys agree with that? Now, 
how do I combine these three fractions? How do I combine? Well, I multiply, I multiply actually 5 half with what? You guys remember how to do this adding? See, the first expression, the first term is actually 5 half divided by 1. So imagine it 1 in the denominator. So what do you do? Well, this common denominator, you need to divide it by 1. Okay, you get actually half and you multiply that with the, with the numerator, right? So if you multiply, well, let me do a, 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 a exercise here. So for uh, what I'm trying to say here is that uh, suppose that I have 1 over 4 plus uh, 1 over uh, 1 over 2, right? How do you add these two fractions? Well, the common denominator would be 4, right? And then you divide the common denominator by, f by, by 4. Uh, if you divide the common denominator by the 4 here, you get 1. 1 times this 1 is 1, so you write 1. Plus, you divide the common denominator by this 2, you get 2. 2 would be multiplied by 1 here, you get what? 2. So that, that, that means you get 3 fourths, right? Okay. So, so we are doing the same thing here. Uh, I have a denominator 1 here, so I divide the common denominator by 1. I get actually half. I will be multiplying actually half with actually 5 half. What do I get? Uh, so what you're going to get, so you're multiplying actually 5 half with actually half, right? When you do that, you will be adding the exponents, right? So you get x to the 5 half plus a half. What is that? 6 half, which is 3. So you get x to the 3. Minus, uh, in the second term, the denominator is 1 as well. So you divide the common denominator by 1. You get x to the half. Multiply x to the half with the numerator, right? So you'll be multiplying x to the half with heck actually half, right? What do you get? Actually half times actually half, right? Actually half times actually half. You will be adding the exponents again, right? So you get actually half plus a half, which is what? One. And then the last term, you divide the common denominator by the denominator actually half, you get one. 1 multiplied by 2 is 2. So that's what you get. Uh, is everybody okay with what I did? Yeah. So in the last, for the last fraction here, what I did is I divided the common denominator by actually half, right? They are the same, right? The common denominator and this denominator, they are the same. If I, if I divide this guy by this, I get 1. And 1 multiplied by 2 is 2. So that's how I'm getting that 2. Is everybody okay with that? And uh, there is nothing else to do. Just uh, write this as actually 3 minus 3x plus a 2. And some people might want to write root x, okay? Instead of actually have. Now all these tricks, algebraic tricks that I'm going over, you will need them at some point in other problems. Okay. So in other problems in in this course, uh, this will be this will be, you you'll have to do this part of the problem. This is not going to be the entire problem. Yeah. Uh, in what Yeah, so uh, the rule is the following. Suppose that I have a to the x to the power y, right? In that case, you multiply the exponents. Uh, however, if you have a to the x multiplied by a to the y, okay, that's when you add the exponents. Yeah, yeah that's a very good question. All right, any, any, any questions on this problem anymore? All right.
another very important algebraic trick that you need to know is the following exercise. So this would be this would be number three. Uh, the question is rationalize rationalize uh, the expression now usually uh, you, you'll be usually you rationalize the numerator or the denominator so here's a here's a problem uh, 9 plus h the root of that minus a 3 uh, divided by h. So in this case I want to rationalize the numerator. What that means is that in, in the numerator I don't want that root. Is everybody okay with that? So I want to rationalize the numerator it means that we don't want the root in the numerator. Okay. So how do I get rid of that? What's the trick? Anyone remembers how to get rid of that? Yeah. Right, very good. So, so what he's saying is that, uh, well, what the trick is, you multiply uh, this fraction with the following quantity. Uh, you multiply this by what we call uh, the conjugate of the numerator. The conjugate of the numerator is is this plus three. So instead of minus three, you have you are add, uh, you're uh, adding three. So you multiply and divide by the conjugate of the numerator. Am I making sense? And so if you do this trick, what happens? Well, now you'll be multiplying the numerators, right? So uh, can someone tell me what you get when you multiply the numerators? Uh, in the denominator, I am just going to write h multiplied with 9 plus h root of that plus a 3. Uh, in the numerator, if I multiply the two numerators, what do I get? What do I get if I multiply the numerators? Well, start multiplying out, right? <laughs> start multiplying out. What do you get? Yeah. When you multiply out the numerators, uh, you can use FOIL to multiply them. Um, uh, another, another trick is that when you multiply the numerators, notice that what you have is A minus B times a plus b, right? That is uh, the ex the, uh, the form of each t each term in the numerator uh, is a minus b and a plus b, right? When you multiply them, you get what? a squared minus b squared, right? So if you look at it, uh, I think of think of this guy to be an a, this guy to be a b, right? So then I have a minus b, a plus b. So if you multiply them, you get a squared minus b squared, right? So that means you get 9 plus h root of that squared minus 3 squared, right? Now, if you didn't like this, uh, all you have to do is just multiply out, okay? Just multiply out like foil, okay? And uh, you'll get the same answer. So this would be 9 plus h minus 9 uh, divided by h times root of 9 plus h uh, plus a 3. And then 9 plus h minus 9, that reduces to h. So I get root of 9 plus h plus a 3. And finally, what can I say? This is equal to 1 over the root of 9 plus h plus a 3, right? So 
So that's the final answer. Uh, did that make sense to you? Uh, you are going to apply this trick uh, when we get to chapter two, okay? When we talk about limits, uh, or not, it's chapter one, I think. Uh, limits, you'll be applying this trick of rationalizing. So whenever you see a problem uh, in this course where you have a root function in the numerator on the denominator, uh, the trick that you might want to apply is rationalizing. Okay? So keep that in mind. Are any questions on any, any of the steps? Again, I had the expression root of 9 plus h minus 3 divided by h. So what did I do? Well, I multiplied uh, the fraction. Um, I multiplied and divided by the conjugate of the numerator, right? So what's the conjugate of the numerator? The numerator is root of 9 plus h minus 3. The conjugate of this is root of 9 plus h plus 3. So I multiplied and divide by the conjugate of the numerator. And then when I multiplied the numerators and the denominators together, uh, I got uh, 9 plus h minus 9 divided by h times. Notice that I didn't do anything in the, num in the denominator, right? When I multiplied the, uh, the denominators, I didn't multiply out by h, right? Why didn't I do that? Because I knew that I can cancel out h. Okay, so usually when you apply this trick, don't multiply out, uh, uh, don't multiply out here, uh, because you might be able to cancel out that h. So, uh, and then we got h over h times the uh, root of 9 plus h plus 3, cancel out the h's and you'll get the final answer. Uh, any questions on, on that? Okay. You guys are uh, remembering stuff? Uh, you see, it's okay to forget stuff, um, but it's not okay uh, to not be able to remember the things that you have learned once you review them. Okay. So, um, uh, you know, if you don't do something for a while, you will, you will forget them, right? But usually, if you have worked hard when you studied something, uh, then when you review, you start to remember everything, okay? Um, okay, so the next problem is of solving equations, okay? So problem four. And I'm just going to say solve. So I'll be giving you a bunch of equations and you need to solve them. Uh, the first one, let me start with something easy. I have x squared minus x minus 12 equals to 0. Uh, how would I solve it? Was that factor out? Okay, so if you factor this out, uh, what do you get? on the left side. How do you factor out? When you have a quadratic, right, how do you factor it out? Uh, well, you, what's the coefficient of x squared? The coefficient of x squared is 1, right? You multiply the coefficient of x squared with the constant. What's the constant? Negative 12. If you multiply, what do you get? negative 12, right? So the trick is you, you need to find two numbers A and B so that A times B is negative 12 and A plus B is negative 1. You need to find two factors of negative 12 so that, uh, so that when you add them you get the coefficient of X. The coefficient of x is negative 1. So your goal is to find two factors of negative 12 so that their sum is the coefficient of negative x. So how do I do that? Well, what a and b should I pick? I, I want a times b to be negative 12. I want a plus b to be negative 1. 
Negative four and three. That's that's very good. So this is. So what I'm going to do. So I know that I can pick uh, one of them to be negative four, the other one to be uh, positive three. So which one should I be? Writing? Negative x as negative four x plus three x. Okay. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is factor out from the first two and factor out from the second two. Okay. And so what do I get? I get, I can factor out x from the first two terms, which would be x minus 4, is that correct? And then from the second two terms, I can factor out a 3, and then I'm going to get what? x minus 4 as well. So now, if I look at both of the terms, x minus 4 is a common factor, right? So I can factor that out. And what do I get then? X plus 3. And I know some of you could do all this in your head. If you could do it in your head, all these steps, go from the first step to the last, last one. Okay. Now, uh, so that means either X minus 4 is 0, or X plus 3 is 0, right? One or the other factor must be 0. And then, so that, that means either x is 4 or x is what? Negative 3. Is everybody okay with that? Questions on that? No? Okay. Uh, let's do another example like this. B, let's say I have uh, y squared minus y minus 2 uh, equals to, um, equals to uh, 0. Okay. Um, can someone tell me what would be the factors this time? What's that? Yeah, so it'll be uh, y minus 2 times y plus 1, right? You guys agree with that? All right, so uh, either then y minus 2 is 0 or y plus 1 is 0. And then y is 2 or y is negative 1. You guys are okay with that? Okay. Um, okay, so C, let's say I have x to the 4 minus x squared minus 2 equals to 0. What should I do here? Yeah. Good, very good. So in this case, what I'm going to do first is, uh, so what I'm going to do here first is uh, do the following. I'm going to let uh, y to be x squared, okay? And then on the left-hand side, what do I get? Notice that x to the 4 is the same as x squared squared, right? x to the 4 is the same as x squared squared. And then uh, x squared is y. So I have this. And uh, notice that uh, y squared minus y minus 2, we saw that before, right? And we can factor that out as what? y minus 2 times y plus 1, right? Everybody's okay with that? And uh, now I'm going to uh, put back x squared. So y is x squared minus 2. And this would be x squared plus 1. Okay. Um, x squared minus 2, uh, can you factor that out further? 
Uh, this is x squared minus root 2 squared, right? Everybody's okay with that? And so this will be x minus root 2 times x plus root 2 times x squared plus 1. Right? Uh, in this case, yeah. Oh, I'm just trying to factor out x squared minus 2. Um, if you didn't do that, there is. I'm going to show you, an, uh, if you from this step, you could do it a different way as well. Okay, I'm going to show that, show that to you in a bit. But I can factor out x squared minus 2 in this way. So w what am I using here? I'm using the formula a squared minus b squared is what? a minus b times a plus b, right? And so because I have x squared minus root 2 squared, that's a squared minus b squared, so I can write it as x minus root 2 multiplied with x plus root 2. So now I could say either x minus root 2 is 0, or x plus root 2 is 0, or x squared plus 1 is 0. From the first one, I get x is what? Root 2 or x is negative root 2. Notice that x squared plus 1 is never 0, right? Because x squared is always non-negative. So plus 1 is always at least 1, right? So x squared plus 1 cannot never be 0. So you don't get any, any solution from there, okay? So this one has no, no solution. Is everybody okay? Yeah. Uh, why can you do the square root of negative 1? Oh, the, because you get imaginary numbers, right? You're not getting real numbers. Okay. Yeah. If you allow complex numbers, you can say that the solutions are plus or minus i. So I could say, I could say, so I should, I should be saying no real solution, okay? So um, I could say that in, from here, I could say that x is equal to plus or minus i if I allow complex numbers, okay? Everybody's okay? So I'm not allowing complex numbers in this course. So we're not, we're just gonna say that this equation does not have any real solution, okay? Everybody's okay with that? Now, somebody said something about factoring it out here. So, so right after this step here, we factored out x squared minus two, right? If you didn't do that, uh, so what you have is x squared minus 2 multiplied with uh, x squared plus 1, right? So after this step, one thing you could have done is that you could have said, well, x squared minus 2 is 0 or x squared plus 1 is 0, right? Can I say that? Well, now I could say that either x squared is 2 or x squared is negative 1. And here I could say, if x squared is 2, what is x? Yeah. And uh, this one has no real solution. Okay, so again, you get the same answer if you did uh, in a different way. Uh, is everybody okay with that? All right. Um, okay, any questions at all, anyone? All right, let's look at a different example then. Uh, this would be, this was C, right? Uh, D, let's say I need to solve absolute value of 2x minus 5 equals to 3. So I need to solve absolute value of 2x minus 5 equals to 3. Okay. So how do I do that? Uh, was that? Yeah, so you, you set up two equations, plus with one with a plus 3, one with a minus 3, and then you solve it. 
So you try to get rid of the absolute value first, yeah. Okay, so I was going to review that in, in, uh, right here. So here's, here's the meaning of absolute value. So uh, if you have a real number x, okay, the absolute value of x is the same as x if x is non-negative. Okay. However, uh, if if x is negative, if x is negative, then the absolute value of x is negative x. Okay. What's going on here? Uh, for example, what is absolute value of two? Well, if if because two is already positive. Absolute value of 2 is 2. What is absolute value of negative 2? The absolute value of negative 2, see, when x is negative, the absolute value of x is negative x, right? So, absolute value of negative 2 would be negative of negative 2, right? Which is positive 2. It works. I'm so. so Basically, when you take the absolute value of something, you're making it positive, right? You're making it positive. So, negative 2, if I take the absolute value of negative 2, I get positive 2. Okay? Again, uh, when I write it in this way, absolute value of x is x when x is already positive. Then there is nothing to do. When x is negative, though, how do you make a negative number positive? Well, if you multiply a negative number by another negative, you make it positive, right? So that's why I'm writing negative x, because x is already negative. So when you write negative x, it's, it's positive. Um, now, the way you want to think about absolute values is the following, okay? So let's say so this is the number line. This is zero here. And this is where two is, and this is where negative two is, right? So think of absolute value of a number to be the distance from the number to the origin zero. Okay, so the distance from here to here is what? Two. The distance from here to here is two as well. So think of absolute value of a number as the distance from of that number from the origin zero. A am I making sense? Okay. So, uh, notice that suppose that I have absolute value of of x is equal to uh, 5 okay what can you say then about x if absolute value of x is 5 then x could be either 5 or x could be what negative 5 these are the only possibilities right x couldn't be anything else so, in, when I'm trying to solve this equation, absolute value of 2x minus 5 is 3, uh, I can get rid of the absolute value in the following way. I can say this means that 2x minus 5 is equal to 3, or 2x minus 5 is equal to what? Negative 3. Okay, from the first, the, from the first equation, what do I get? 2x is equal to what? I am going to add 5 on both sides, so I get 8. Or 2x, again I'm going to be adding 5 on both sides, but this time I'm going to get what? 2. So adding 5 on both sides. Um, and now I'm going to divide by what? 2. So I get x is 4, or x is 1. So that's the, those are the, uh, the solutions x is either 2 or x is 1. Sorry, x is either 4 or x is 1. Everybody is okay with that? Alright. Um, let's look at... Um, now, it's solving, but I'm going to work with inequalities now. So that was what? D? Okay, E. Let's say I want to solve this inequality, 3x plus 2 in absolute value, larger than or equal to 4. 
absolute value of 3x plus 2 is larger than or equal to 4, okay? Let me review something first here on the side. Uh, so if I tell you that the absolute value of A, if I tell you that absolute value of A is less than, um, uh, is less than 4, uh, what are the possible values of A? It's strictly less than 4. So let's look at the n uh, number line, okay? Let's say this is the number line, this is where 0 is, okay? Um, and what 4 is right here, let's say, and let's say negative 4 is right here. So if I know that absolute value of A is less than 4, remember what's the meaning of absolute value of A? Absolute value of A is the distance of A from the origin, right? Absolute value of A represents the distance between the origin 0 and A. So then, what are the possible values of A? Can A be, can A be greater than 4? No, because then absolute value of A would be greater than 4, right? Can A be less than negative 4? Like negative 5? No, because then the absolute value is still greater than 4, right? So A has to be where? A has to be between negative 4 and 4, right? So this means that A is between negative 4 and 4, right? Everybody's okay with that? Now, someone tell me if absolute value of A is larger than or equal to 4, then what should be 4? Can, can A now be between negative 4 and 4? No, because then the absolute value is less than 4. So A has to be outside of negative 4 to 4, right? So in that case, either, either A is larger or equal to 4. Let me write it in a different way, sorry. Uh, either A is less than or equal to negative 4, or a is larger or equal to 4, right? Everybody's okay? Alright, so, so let's apply that in our problem. Absolute value of 3x plus 2 is larger than 4, right? So I can say what? I can say that 3x plus 2 is either less than negative 4 or 3x plus 2 is greater than 4, right? Are you guys okay with that? I'm saying the absolute value of 3x plus 2 is larger than 4, right? So the distance between 3x plus 2 and 0 is at least 4, right? The distance between 3x plus 2 and 0 is at least 4, which means that either 3x plus 2 is bigger than 4 or 3x plus 2 is less than negative 4, right? The distance between 3x plus 2 and 0 is at least 4. Which is basically, I'm, I'm, I'm applying this, right? A is 3x plus 2. A is 3x plus 2. So if absolute value of A is larger than 4, then A is either greater than 4 or less than negative 4. So that's what we applied here. Now that we got rid of the absolute value, it's easy to solve, right? So what should I do in the first one? We will be adding, sorry, we will be subtracting 2 from both sides, right? So if I subtract 2 from the left side, I, I get 3x. If I subtract 2 on the right, negative 6. Or 3x would be greater than what? 2. From the first one again, I get x is what? Negative 2. Or here I get what? 2 thirds. So either x is less than negative 2 or x is greater than uh, 2 third, right? Everybody's okay? Now, it's important to under, uh, know how to write your answer in interval notation. So instead of writing your answer as, as this, uh, you want to write your answer in interval notation. So what is that? Well, the first inequality says x could be anything less than negative 2, right? 
So, so another way of writing the first one is uh, negative infinity to negative 2 and I am going to include 2. So when I write square brackets it means that negative 2 is included and then uh, x is greater than 2 third is written as 2 third to infinity. Okay, so that means x could be anything in that interval, okay? Is everybody okay with that? So x is inside of this set of values. Okay. Now, what's the difference between writing, so let's look at a digression here. So what's the difference between negative infinity to negative 2 with a parenthesis and negative infinity to negative 2 with a square bracket? The parenthesis is everything up to 2. Negative 2? Yeah, but it doesn't negative. include negative 2. It does not include negative 2. And the other one includes negative yeah. 2, right? Everybody's okay with that? Yeah. 